Welcome back to Kivumbi 2017. We are talking about what's happening in the Kenyan judiciary. I'm speaking to two of the most renowned uh, lawyers we have in this town, Karanja Kabage and Edwin Sifuna. And we went on a break on a very heated note. And uh, Sifuna here is saying, is, 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 is saying that Raila Odinga does not have a pedestal like Uhuru Kenyatta and that he can get away with anything, he says. That's not what I say. First, I think it's important to <clears throat> make a number of uh, observations. One, when the president made a statement that they will revisit the issue, he, did, he never explained, he did not elaborate, he did not say who he was going to revisit, <laughs> not at all. Now, if he implied the judicial, <coughs> as Funa is trying to allude to, the issue is this. First and foremost, I want you to understand. Well, who, did, who did he imply? Now, let me just say, I'm saying, just in case that is what he meant, I want Sifuna to, t to understand, and he knows very well he's a lawyer. Not even the president of the Republic of Kenya can do anything as far as the judiciary is concerned. And I would like you to invite every Kenyan to read chapter 10 of our constitution as far as judiciary is concerned. It is not something you wake up today and tomorrow you do as you wish. Now, that is something I wanted to make it very clear. Secondly, he has characterized Lyra as a sweeper <laughs> in this context. And I'll tell you this, Raira today, he is not a person of ordinary stature in the Republic of Kenya. As a matter of fact, we are looking at either him or Uhuru being the commander in chief of the Republic of Kenya. Therefore, his words are not Sfuna's words. They're not Sfuna, uh, uh, Sweeper's words. Right. They are very important in the context of the responsibility for which he is campaigning for. Sifuna. To become, you know, let, 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 let me, me just say, let me, let me just finish. say, let this, me finish. Uh, it's ben. important. All right. So, Let's give him I, I want Let's to make finish. it very clear yes. that the, the gravity of the statement by Raira, to me, they have no equivalence other than of our, of our president in the Republic of Kenya. And to try to demean and to grade Raira, to degrade Raira to a level when it is convenient to call him to say he's equivalent of a, or a sweeper. I think to me, it's no. a, it's a, right. it's a statement Mi, Mr. that should, Mr. Not, Kabage, should withdraw my brother. Mr. Thank Kabage you. will try and twist the words as much as possible. But I, I have explained to you, Ben, what these people have perfected is drawing a false equivalence. It is not the same thing when a president of a republic issues a threat. You know he has the means, he has the instruments to actually carry out that threat as opposed to an ordinary citizen who would not be able and is not in control of the, of the, of the police force in this country. He's in charge of the entire army. He's in charge of, he's a commander in chief of all our armed forces. If he says, Sifuna, today you are going to be arrested as he is wont to do, it will happen. So what you need to understand, and there is a greater responsibility when you lift up that Bible, Ben, and swear an oath to defend the constitution, you have a greater responsibility than me who hasn't taken the oath. People need to respect the oath of the offices they're taking. When I drew the parallels, I'm giving you an example to understand the difference between a threat made by the, a sitting president, somebody who should understand the gravitas of the words that come out of his mouth. Right. It is not the same as an ordinary person making the same. All right. Number two, let us be clear. Let us be very, very clear that as Kenyans, we are teetering on the brink of something that is very, very dangerous. We need people to understand that even when you are upset or angry at an institution, you cannot go to the extent where you are threatening people. And you see, you will take these things lightly, but everything happens in a context in this country. We buried somebody who was responsible for ICT at the IABC less than two, a month ago. This is the country we live in, Ben, so you right. should take this threat seriously. And that is why the Chief Justice is saying he's even concerned that his own security and the security of the judges in this country is not up to speed. I mean, these are things that should worry Kenyans. Stop taking these issues lightly and making them about Rai Loding. I mean, that's right. the point I'm making. I, I think it's Let really, me give you a minute to respond to that okay. before we move on to something I, I else. think it's important for us to appreciate one thing. And as I said, and uh, Buna knows, if anybody is a, a 
of the content of our constitution, from the preamble all the way to the sixth schedule, he'll tell you one thing. A politician, whoever he is, can make any statement about playing around with this constitution. But I want to tell you this, and I want to say this even to our judiciary. They can sit pretty knowing nobody, <laughs> nobody in this Because country. threats are constitutional? Please, please, they are please, extra constitutional. Please, please, please. Wait, let me finish. Nobody can sit down today and make changes to this constitution. And if you want to make changes, particularly to do anything, you need to do with the Judicial Service Commission and the judiciary, you require the following. One, you will need a bill to be published that will need to be read first time with, for once and within nine, uh, and after 90 days, that's when there will be a further discussion as far as the issue of the amendment of the constitution is concerned. These are personal so, threats. Listen, under this, which article was Musando killed? Listen, under which article first of, of all, the constitution first of all, you allows the murder you, you, you of are, someone? You I mean, speaking, senior, sure. You are it's a about personal threat. Listen, you are the speaking chief about, justice has spoken about personal threats to themselves and their families. You are speaking which about constitution the allows that? Musando. Listen, you are speaking about the late Musando without any shred of evidence who killed him. But he was killed. That's yes, what we are talking it about. Which, under which article uh -uh. of the Constitution? It, it, it does not matter. Listen, Surely. Listen, I think it's important for us to understand this. You cannot come here and make a statement that the late Musando, a fellow Kenyan, was killed by insinuation by government. But it is a responsibility it's, of listen, state to protect everyone. Listen, right. Senior right. Shwari, you know, I think death, we are being very, very dishonest. No, no, listen. I mean, that's important. What do you mean by death, death or car? Death or car. Do, death or car. But he knows that there has to be investigations, which I presume they are continuing, and there has to be a person to be charged. All right. And when Allow that me to ask you this, Mr. Kabage. Yes. Today, the Chief Justice, in, among the things he says, he yes. said, uh, and I quote, in the same vein, we will not allow anybody to dictate to us how to discharge our mandate as given by the people of Kenya under the Constitution. We want to state uh, that the rule of law must be allowed to prevail at all times. Who do you think in, he was referring in to? In fact, let me tell you, he was stating a fact of what is provided for in the Constitution. That he was directing this at listen, some no, no, political... Listen, doesn't matter who he was operative. directing to. Mr. Kabage will not say it. He, listen, he was <laughs> stating a fact as provided for in the Constitution no. that the, the, the judiciary, either as a person or as an institution, cannot either be directed by any individual or right. any authority in this republic, as far as discharge of its mandate is concerned. So the, the, the chief justice was very right. Let it's me say this, that. uh, Ben, and that's a fact. in finality. Uh, yeah. Nobody is scared when somebody talks about uh, kicking out the judges of the Supreme Court. I mean, we know, like, even the petitions by uh, Jubilee that were filed by, uh, what's his name, Wambugu, and, and all these other ones that we've seen. Every lawyer of considerable, uh, you know, can tell that those petitions are not going anywhere. That is not what scares the chief justice. If you stand somewhere and say, oh, you will, uh, you will abolish the, the institution of the judiciary, we know you're not going to be able to do it because Kenyans gave these things unto ourselves. What prompts somebody of a seniority of a chief justice to actually call this press conference and decry the lack of security being accorded to judicial officers? These are personal threats. Personal threats are outside the realm of the constitution. That is what affects people's minds and their ability to discharge their functions. All right. When you threaten someone and threaten their families, I mean, that is let's, what the Chief Justice right. was talking let, about. Let, let, we need to move, move away from, from the issue of threats and personal security. Let's talk about the petitions. He's saying that you're not worried about the strength or the merit of the petitions. But what is your take on the fact that around almost all judges of the Supreme Court have petitions against them. That's what I'm telling you. I mean, uh, this, this is an extension of the tantrums that we have seen, that they have tried everything and they, it doesn't seem to be working. At the end of the day, you need very serious grounds and evidence to be able to remove a judge of the Supreme Court. The Wambugu petition, first of all, it was all over the place. There was absolutely nothing that was... I can guarantee you it was not intended to achieve the removal of the Chief Justice. It was intended to, remove, to, to achieve something else, which he can tell us. These other petitions, I've seen them myself, and we are anticipating the hearings of those petitions right. because we need to be able to see this evidence that they are talking about. First of all, how was it obtained? Is it credible evidence? If it is credible 
evidence and let's proceed and, uh, and take disciplinary action. But I can guarantee you, it is an extension of the tantrums that we saw from the president. And even these demonstrations, they are in tandem. I mean, all of these things are coordinated attacks against right. the judiciary. Well, now, Akili, what is your let, take? Let me just first of all make one statement very clear. On Sunday, in the day, Sunday Nation, page 8, there was a, a quorum by the former Chief Justice, Justice Mutunga. If you read it, and his, even his previous statement, he said, the political class in this country must respect the judiciary. Both sides. And he was making reference to the, uh, the judicial, uh, the, the, the judgment of 2013, all right? So I think it is very important, and I want to say this with all respect. It is important, particularly for us who are trained in law, and my good friend here is one of them. Let us say this. This is a very young country, and one of the most important things that we need to realize is we have a doctrine of separation of powers. But that doesn't mean there will be no uh, situations whereby there will be conflict among these uh, judicial arms of the government. That is as it is, but it doesn't matter. Right. What is important is for us to realize we are a growing country, but it is important we respect institutions. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying every one of us must do so. But let me also say this. I, ought to stay, I take exception to what uh, uh, my friend has said here, learned friend, that the content of the petitions do not reach the threshold, basically. That's what he's saying, of removal of this judge or that judge. Now, and then he has also said that uh, there will be evidence that is going to be adduced. And that evidence, he hasn't seen. He doesn't know anything about it. So all I can say is this. The Kenyans have a right to petition as it were. But no lawyer today can sit here and say that petition cannot <laughs> succeed or will not or all is going to succeed. All so right. let us wait for the evidence. Once the evidence Allow is provided, mm -hmm. then all we right. can make a determination. Fair enough. Allow me to ask both of you this question. Um, yeah. Right now we are seeing Jubilee, <clears throat> I mean calling a spade a spade, Jubilee attacking the judiciary or having, being very harsh towards the judiciary because of obvious reasons that uh, ruling on the 1st of September. Uh, we have seen uh, President Uru Kenyatta uh, you know, calling uh, the Supreme Court judges' names. And uh, many people have said that is his right. He has a right to express his... To insult you know, people. That is what the, happening in 2017. In 2013, when, when the Coalition for Reforms and Democracy Court lost uh, the presidential petition, we did see them uh, calling... Uh, the Supreme Court Mahakama Bandia. So both sides of the political divide have something to, uh, to be blamed for. Is it time, do you think, Mr. Sifuna, is it time politicians stopped encroaching on the independence of the judiciary? Well, that's... That, do, you that, first, do, you, do, you, do you think that is what, it, what is happening? First of all, I will continue to reject the false equivalence between the statements that were made by Uhuru <laughs> and the Mahakama Bandia unfortunate statement by Raila way back in, I think, 2014. Now, what you need to understand is that I have tried to make the distinction between a criticism of a judgment, and by the way, Ben, if we're being honest, the judgment in 2013 has been criticized the world over. The world over, that it relied heavily on technicalities, and it did not make sense even when the final judgment was, uh, was actually you know, released. Right. It is something that you have to admit. So. We did not go to the extent. Did you hear any of the judges uh, in the Supreme Court then uh, receiving threats on, on themselves, on the person of their, of, of their families? Did you see any petitions for their removal? Did you see the kind of circus that you're seeing right now? I mean, we did say we were critical of the judgment. And it was even taken to law schools across the country and was debated and we have attended all those symposia and we have seen all the criticism that so was So you left. reject the comparison? I reject that comparison and you as media should refuse to be drawn into that false equivalence that Jubilee always tries to push. It's the same thing they do even with the head speech cases. All right. Yeah. Mr. Kabage, do you think the political class encroaches on the independence of the judiciary? I think we are a growing nation and as we struggle 
I want to agree that we need to be to exercise a degree of caution, all of us, the three arms of government, and to realize none exists in exclusion of the other, and none exists, all right, as a by the way. Every one of them exists because we have chosen one thing called the rule of law and the due process. And therefore, it, my, it is my submission that every one of us in this country must accord the due respect to the three arms of government. And I also want to say this. My friend has said several times that there is no equivalence. I want to say this. All over the world, no litigant can go before the court and tell that court, Mr. Court, it is your time to redeem yourself. That was a statement that was made. And if that statement was not in itself a threat, I do not know all what right. a threat is all about. How would you compare the, that the, statement? The, listen, yeah. listen, this <laughs> is very, very important. Because I expected the kind of reaction now we are getting from the Chief Justice, that he should have made a statement that we are a court of justice, and we listen to a case, all right? All right. We are human beings. We can make mistakes. But we do not accept you to appear before us. And the first thing you say is that you are having an opportunity to, to redeem, redeem yourself. yourself. Let, me let, let me let Sifuna say yeah, uh, answer. Let, that. Let, to me, that is... Let me, let me put the issue of a redemption in context. Number one, I have told you that immediately following that ruling, and that ruling, Ben, is a matter of public knowledge, that there were 1,001 criticisms leveled against it, its reasoning and the judgments and the deductions that were made by that particular court in upholding Uhuru Kenyatta's win. Even the rejection of uh, uh, evidence... Uh, at the, at the very beginning. Hmm. So the context of the redemption was, and everybody acknowledges, and it is on record, that following that particular ruling, there was a waning in the confidence of the judiciary because people could see that probably there were extraneous matters that went into the judgment. When you talk about redemption, this was the second time the only other time that they were, the Supreme Court was getting seized of this particular matter in, in terms of a presidential election. So that the redemption was, this time around, give us a decision that Kenyans can actually see. Right, this, fair enough. This makes Mr. sense. Kabaka that is a number two. As a threat. Number two. As a threat because cause, because they have the they, the they have certain blinkers that they, they put on yes. that, 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 that see, they, they makes them see things differently. Number two. You will right, remember submissions by counsel for Uhuru Kenyatta in that particular court in 2013. Ahmed Nasir Abdullahi started the submissions by telling that court that you are like a child on their feet. Today, you should not, not, not on their feet, you're learning to crawl. All right. That you are still a young court, that you should not express yourselves. The court has grown. I mean, All at right. this particular point, they, I think, they I can think express themselves. We need, we need to wind this up. We don't have time. I, I'll give you 30 seconds only to okay. make your final remarks. Okay. Well, I, I think it's important for us to... Uh, realize one thing. The Supreme Court cannot, in fact, the Constitution is very clear. It says you cannot act under the direction of any individual or authority. And the reason why I am talking about the statement that it is your opportunity to redeem yourself, All right. it is such a, a, a very weighty statement made against the judiciary. At the beginning, of a very important case All right. that I, 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 I couldn't even believe that the judiciary just kept quiet. All right. Thank you. Without any rebuttal. Okay. <clears throat> For me, uh, I really want to advise. Uh, our brothers on uh, the other side. We are waiting for sobriety. We have not seen it, uh, Ben. Uh, the moment when people want to have uh, sober discussions, uh, we will have sober discussions on how we carry forward as a country. But this uh, uh, systematic protest organized across the country, they will not change the decision of the Supreme Court. The decision has already been made. All these threats to remove judges and even to their personal lives and their relations, I mean, it is a bit extreme. Right. So we would like to see some sobriety. And in this particular issue of sobriety, we want the president to take the lead. Right. The moment he becomes sober, we will all become sober. Thank you, gentlemen.
lawyers Karanja Kabage and Edun Sifuma, Sifuna uh, with their you know, perspectives on what's happening in the judicial circles. Uh, we are keeping an eye on that story. Thank you for joining us on tonight's edition of Kivumbi 2017. As Kenyans continue to wait for that full judgment and to wait in the run-up to the repeat presidential election. Don't go too far. Linda Ogutu is coming up at the top of the hour with Katie and Brian. Thank you so much.